Hello everyone. Today we're going to talk about the InfraGuard and how it is structured. We're also going to talk about the end results of this community harassment. But first I'd like to tell you about the facts of how I was placed on the watch list and the roots of my community harassment. On July 29th, 2013, I cut ties with Kristen Fedorovich, someone I had been in a relationship with for several years. Now, I had lived 44 years of my life at this point and never had been subjected to any kind of stalking or any kind of obsessive behavior. Within one week of breaking up with Kristen Fedorovich, all kinds of harassment started in my life. Uh, I had vandalism to my home. I had mail that was stolen and then returned repeatedly opened. Uh, there was uh, harassing phone calls. There were, my email account had been repeatedly broken into. Uh, there was breaking and entering into my garage and Kristen Fedorovich had been seen lurking on my street during this period. Now, this harassment went on for three months from uh, July 2013 to October 2013. It was at this point in October when I decided something needed to be done about this as the harassment seemed to be getting worse and worse. So my first step was to call the Greensboro Police Department. And what I did was I filed two reports, uh, one for the vandalism to my home where someone had literally climbed on top of my house and ripped the shingles off and for the constant mail theft. Of course, this did no good. The Greensboro Police Department did, did not. They took the report, but they didn't help at all. So as the harassment continued to get worse, I decided something really needed to be done at this point. So I took a copy of the police report and I mailed it to Kristen's father. Now, this was in hopes that he would talk to her and maybe use, uh, maybe talk to her family and they would be able to calm her down and stop this obsessive behavior that I was subjected to that I was having to deal with. Uh, this letter would actually wind up backfiring in my face. Now, as the harassment continued, I decided I needed to do something uh, stronger to try to end this whole harassment. So on October 24th in 2013, I filed charges against Kristen Fedorovich for criminal stalking and the court date was set for uh, December 20th, 2013. Now, when the court date arrived, that letter for mail theft wound up backfiring in my face. Uh, it was used against me and with her uh, spotless record combined with the lies that she told, I was forced to mediate and drop these uh, stalking charges. So one month it went by between the court date and uh, the last week of January 2014 when my full harassment began. When my full post-2000 COINTELPRO harassment started at a very high level with the Greensboro Police Department being a primary participant in it. Now let's talk about the InfraGuard and how it is structured. The InfraGuard began in Cleveland, Ohio in 1996 and has since expanded to become a national level program with InfraGuard coordinators in each FBI field office. A simple way of looking at the InfraGuard is they are miniature FBIs. The InfraGuard defined a partnership between the FBI and the private sector it is an association of persons who represent businesses, academic institutions, state and local law enforcement agencies, and other participants dedicated to sharing information and intelligence to prevent hostile acts against the United States. Now, what is really happening here? What the InfraGuard amounts to is a modern-day secret police force made up of ordinary citizens who have been coerced and into spying and informing on their fellow U.S. citizens. It is nothing less than fascism and has been growing by leaps and bounds every day. The InfraGuard is a volunteer organization. Uh, federal organizations and federal law enforcement source the InfraGuard 
and have meetings when they are trying to decide where a terrorist event may take place. Again, this is key, this huge growth in informants. Uh, there have been a lot of people tricked into thinking that they are doing the right thing for the community. Now, let's take a look at the next step, and that's how is this target list compiled? Again, this begins with the InfraGuard. As we have already said, the InfraGuard has meetings to decide where a terrorist event may take place. Now, it's in these meetings that they drum up a lot of fear. And it is out of this fear that they ask people to come up with target lists, to come up with a list of names of people that they may suspect. Same thing is true on the local level with Neighborhood Watch. Uh, Neighborhood Watch could be asked to come up with some names of some people that they possibly would suspect of unusual behavior. For instance, they could say, yeah, we know someone that's been doing some strange stuff in his backyard, or he's been taking some odd packages into his house, or he's had a lot of people coming over. He's been acting real strange. Once again, they are drumming up fear. The FBI can also contact corporations and ask them if they've had any employees that they've had any problems out of, or some employees they suspect of unusual behavior. The FBI can also contact universities. Uh, for instance, they could contact a university president and ask to speak to their school psychologist and ask such questions as, do you have any students that have had any erratic behavior or any unusual behavior? And of course, if you know somebody in law enforcement, you could possibly have one put on its target list. Anyone with a strong connection in law enforcement has the power to submit someone's name and possibly be put on a target list. After all, law enforcement organizes Neighborhood Watch. So as you can see, this target list is compiled from these different agencies, uh, third parties, and private organizations. And once the target list is formed, they can start using paid informants and volunteer informants. Uh, DEA has a large number or a large network of informants as well. And what these organizations are told is that these targeted individuals are people of interest and that they're involved in some criminal activity. Now, another angle these law enforcement entities can use is they can go to corporations and universities and offer them something that is called protection for information. What they can do is say, if you can give us a list of people you don't like or people that you think may be a problem in your organization or people that you may suspect of some illegal activity, we can provide, in exchange for this list, protection for you, your staff, and your families. We can make sure that no harm comes to you or your families due to these people of interest. Now. Let's talk about the harassment and the end harassment that results from this post-2000 COINTELPRO program. Once again, this harassment or this end harassment is a COINTELPRO type of harassment, only much more powerful and intense thanks to all of the new technology and electronic harassment. Electronic intercepts have been added to increase the pressure as well. Now the main goals for these perpetrators is to force the uh, targeted individual to commit suicide, uh, become an active shooter, or suicide by a cop. Many targeted individuals commit suicide. However, some targeted individuals react differently to all the harassment from, for example, light and sound. When these tactics are combined with noise campaigns, uh, sleep deprivation, and highway harassment, the results can turn out quite deadly for the targeted individual. What they're trying to do basically is pester you to death. In the eyes of these people, uh, many people will, will fall down and will not survive this process. And you can look at the statistics. Uh, suicide has doubled or tripled in the last 10 years, depending on what area you live in. Uh, the number of active shooters has doubled over the past seven years, where uh, an armed gunman opens fire in a public place. And police officers are told lies about targeted individuals to be actively ready to shoot 
and kill targeted individuals. Once again, the goal here is to force the targeted individual into a violent act, whether it be murder or suicide, under conditions which can plausibly be denied by the government. And this all goes back to this disposition matrix. It's not for foreign terrorists anymore. It's being used on U.S. citizens. In the past 15 years, we have seen the trend switch from where targeting has moved from criminals to innocent citizens. And let me reemphasize, the government will actively deny any involvement with any COINTELPRO type of operations or any kind of related technologies while they actually perpetrate it and protect those who perpetrate it. You can contact me with comments. My email is attached.